Hello and welcome to week three of Isaiah chapter 40. My name is Mark, the vicar at St John's. And we're on a slow walk through this remarkable chapter of the Bible, taking just one small section each week through July and August in order to mine the riches of these words in great depth and detail. So this week we're on verses six to eight. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are like grass and all their faithfulness is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall because the breath of the Lord blows on them. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of our God endures forever. Well, just like we saw last week, these verses start with a voice. Once again, it's the Lord speaking hope to people facing despair. And we saw last week how the Lord's voice and message was to be echoed by his prophets, first by Isaiah and then much later by John the Baptist. And so at the start of verse six, the Lord's voice instructs his prophet to speak, to cry out. Remember the three instructions of verse one? Comfort, speak tenderly, proclaim. Now the instruction is to cry out. And Isaiah responds by saying, well, what shall I cry? What's the message, Lord? What do you want your people to know? What will help them as they face defeat by Babylon and life in exile in the years and decades to come? What shall I tell them to get them through these dark days? Well, we could summarise it like this. Remember that God is big and people are small. We think people are big, don't we? And that God is small. We tell them people are small and God is big. We think people last forever, but God has had his time. Well, tell them it's people that come and go, but the word of our God endures forever. So let's take a look at the details of these verses. And you'll have noticed as we read them a couple of repeated phrases. So here's the first repeated point. People are like grass. All people. Surely the people are grass. Remember, Isaiah has given to the king and the people the prophecy at this time that the mighty nation of Babylon is coming to attack and defeat them. And so the message here is that even Babylon is like grass. Well, in what way? Well, again, the repeated phrases. The grass withers and the flowers fall. They come and they go. Well, anyone who was walking out in Bluebell Woods just a month or two ago will really get this analogy. There were fabulous carpets of blue covering the woodland floor, an awesome sight. Yet go out in those same woods now and there's no sign that those bluebells were ever even there. The grass withers and the flowers fall. So as Babylon comes, get this perspective on the events that are about to dominate and overtake your lives. People are small, but God is big. Even Babylon, this superpower of a nation, will rise and will fall again. And it will happen, well, because the breath of the Lord blows on them. A simple breath from the Lord. And this superpower withers and falls. But, in contrast, the word of our God endures forever. So you people of Judah, you struggling nation, powerless to stand up to Babylon, dark days and hardships ahead. Who will you trust? Well, the answer is clear, isn't it? People and nations will come and go, but the word of our God endures forever. Well, the promise that we saw from last time in verses three to five was that the Lord will indeed bring them back from exile. There is a hope and a future. Verse 5 saying at the end of that promise, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken and the people need to know that this promise is not one that is here today and gone tomorrow, but this promise, this word endures forever. It is here for them today during the reign of Hezekiah and as exile awaits. It is here as Babylon attacks, carries them off into captivity, away from their homes. And it is here in the dark days of exile to get them through as they await their return. Well, do you know this? Do you know that the word of our God endures forever? His promises last. Or do you worry and fret about people and circumstances? Why not instead resolve to stand sure 
on the promises of God. Maybe you look to things that wither and fall when facing dark days and hardships. Well, why not instead resolve to hold fast to the promises of God? For all people are like grass, but the word of our God endures forever. Well, there's one little detail in these verses that we skipped over, and I want us to spend a minute or two uh, just coming back and focusing on this. We saw, didn't we, that all people are like grass, but then there's a parallel phrase that follows in this first sentence that adds another meaning to it. Just underline it for us there. And if we just line up that, the two phrases of that first sentence, we can see how they sit in parallel to one another. All people are like grass. All their faithfulness is like the flowers of the field. It's specifically the faithfulness of the people that comes and goes. It is this that withers and falls. And I think chapters 1 to 39 have shown us exactly this, haven't they? That the people's lack of faithfulness has brought God's judgment. Remember from last week how the faithful city had become like a prostitute. Well, if this is true of our faithfulness to God, then what hope is there for us? Well, in the contrast that verses 6 to 8 bring, this reassures them and us that being part of the people of God does not depend on our faithfulness to him, but on his faithfulness to us. Here's how one writer puts it. The Christian message is not fundamentally challenge, but fundamentally it's assurance. It must be. And I think there's real reassurance for us here, because if you're anything like me, you'll be all too familiar with your failings and your faithfulness to God coming and going like the flowers of the field. Remember those bluebells? Well, the good news of the gospel is not fundamentally a challenge for us to sort it out, but a reassurance that God has sorted it out for us. So let me put it like this. Knowing we are not able to be consistently faithful to him, God sent Jesus to do for us what we cannot do. Now, that doesn't mean that keeping our side of the covenant God has made with his people is not important. It is. But the point is that Jesus came to keep it for us and he succeeds where we fail. To use biblical language, we are justified by putting our faith in Jesus, not by keeping the covenant ourselves. And this is a pretty good thing, isn't it? Because as Isaiah shows, where we simply cannot do it. The word of our God that endures forever, that we find in the gospel, is no longer the contrast to our unfaithfulness, but the cure for it. What shall I cry, says Isaiah? What shall I tell them? Well, the Lord says, tell them our relationship does not depend on their faithfulness to me, but on my faithfulness to them. And so to trust me and my word which endures forever.